What's up, guys? I hope you're well. Today, we're checking out Still Game, the story so far. A lot of you guys recommended this to me, but uh, when I was getting recommendations, I was preparing to go on vacation, on holiday to Florida, to visit family. Let me tell you, I had a great time. Went to a hockey game, went to a baseball game, went to the amusement park a couple times, saw my brother, saw one of my gaming, longtime gaming friends I haven't seen in like four years. Had a lot of fun there, but of course... Hanging out with the boys and the whole crew for this little documentary. I got myself a beer called Juicy Double IPA. It's part of their adventure series. It is from Bootstrap Brewing Company. And they are out of Longmont, Colorado. Let's get into the show, shall we? The opening music's the ultimate. Oh, there it's coming on. So if you're in the kitchen, or if you're upstairs, or if you're out in the garden, it's the, it's almost like a signal that you have to run to the TV. Right. Do you mind what this place used to be like when they built it at first? No. Craig Lang, developing for the future. Aye, aye. Craig Lang, modernity beckons. Craig Lang, tomorrow's already here. Craig Lang. Shite hole. <laughs> Shite hole. <laughs> I've shown it to lots of my English chums and, and people from all over Britain, and they absolutely get it. So although the fact that it, you tend to think of it as, as utterly Glaswegian, there's one or two things they miss, wee references and stuff, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, it travels incredibly well. It's yep. just hilarious, and that's the big... I mean, even with me being an American, I first saw the show probably back in 20, 2011, 2012, and I got it, you know? I got it as an American. Like, this, a lot of the comedy I got, some of the stuff, of, of course, back then was over my head. That's why I wanted to revisit revisit it with you guys. I got to talk slower on YouTube. And then with when I was revisiting it, I got so much more out of it. And I just thought it was fan freaking tastic lovely. Beginning and the end of it. What I love about Still Game is it's it's not just about Glasgow. It's not just about Scotland. Actually, it could be anywhere. Victor and Jack could live in Vladivostok. I bet you there are Victor and Jacks in Vladivostok or Idaho or somewhere. What do you make of this weather, Eric? And the ground's all slippery. I know. I nearly went my arse there. Oh, it's a pair of these you're wanting. Permagrip soles, Timpsons, oh, 1999. Is that right? Ah, uh, you've got to take care of yourself at your age, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Jesus, he's all right. Watch your feet, Jack. It's slippy. <laughs> it's a pair of these you're wanting. Permagrip, 1999. And <laughs> slip. <laughs> that boy at Timson's getting kicked squarely in the nuts. Physical comedy is just universal. Let's be honest. This is It's just pure universal. This is great. Yeah, he didn't like all the loaf of bread. The thing that strikes me about uh, Ford and Greg is that they are in that mold of the classic, classic double act, like Laurel and Hardy, uh, like Morecambe and Wise, like the two Ronnies. Exactly. Somehow, sometimes, very rarely, I think, fate brings two people together for right. a reason. Mm -hmm. And those two happen to meet up and happen to create a third person, if you like, a third thing. Mm. And it's this amazing explosion of talent. The fact that they write, the fact that they perform, and basically the fact that they're very, very funny together. They're oh, great yeah. as individuals, but together there's something special happens. Mm -hmm. Oh, no! Oh, oh, it's so bad! So bad! Fucking murky as hell, too. Jesus. It's all cloudy. <laughs> Can't even see the ball. <laughs> oh, that's heavy. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I for 
first oh, became aware of Still Game uh, when uh, my my household had a very uh, worn out uh, VHS copy of the original stage play. Uh, oh, wow. a bit there. It was I a cat saved a woman's life. Something about the gas being left on and the cat fetched the polis. Look how fucking. <laughs> Look how raw that is. Oh my gosh. What year was that? They just it looks like they're it was just so raw. They had very little money good that they could put into it. Damn. Like even their looks got so much better um over time. From from even from series one to series what six, seven? So much have changed with their looks and that just looked better and better. This is just kinda kinda raw. <laughs> It was just something I could sit down and watch with my dad, you know, and uh, there's always the golfing generations and stuff, and sometimes you've not got tons to talk about, but you stick on still game, and he'd have a beer, and I'd have a cup of tea, and we'd just sit and laugh away. Right. Here, now. There you go. Oh. What a wee cup of tea there, Jack, eh? Well, a wee cup hey. of tea, but lovely, huh? Nice wee orange club with it. Oh, hey. a wee orange wee club, bit of chocolate. <laughs> oh, a wee penguin, oh, eh? Oh, a wee penguin. Aye, yeah. yeah. well, tough <laughs> titty. It's <laughs> rich tea or hee-haw. <laughs> I'll take the hee-haw. Well, we done uh, the show at the Edinburgh Festival, and Karen Corn, who was good enough to give us a venue to do it in, uh, at the end of the run said to us, I can get you to Canada on the back of this. They've got a festival there, and they're willing there to you take your show for three weeks, was it? Three weeks? Mm -hmm. So we get there. <clears throat> now, the set only involved a stinking old carpet, mm -hmm. a hoover, a horrible old three-piece suite, and a sideboard. That was it, and a, a box for a television. So we thought we can get most of that over there. We'll be able to pick that up for a props department over there. Right. However, what we'll not be able to get is a Hoover, which was a pivotal moment in the, in the show, like the one we had in the show. What are you doing with that? I'm oh, sorry, it's got wheels on it. There you are. Yes. Hey, get that plugged in there. Right. You have to remember we were always winding each other up here. We said to Paul, um, mm -hmm. you'll need to bring a Hoover uh, and take it to Canada. And he's like, nah. Uh, an old Hoover, an old Hoover mm -hmm. Jr. Mm -hmm. on the way to Canada. They don't have Hoovers over there like that. No, they don't have Hoovers like that. We said, you know, you'll not be able to get Are you they, kidding they, me? They Hoover different earlier. They different. So can you bring yours? <laughs> so, he's, uh, right up to the last <laughs> minute, with no idea he was going to show up with Hoover. We're standing at the airport waiting for him right there. He turns up. Well, you know, the only way when you lift him, all the stairs comes out of the back. He's up for that. To check in. Oh, oh, to check it in. And they wanted to know what it was and where it was going and all that. You know, he was, his life was a misery. Yeah. But it wasn't until we landed, we actually got there and realised we didn't need the Hoover. The, ca the Canadians don't have Hoover Juniors, they don't have them. So you're going out That's there, right? Crazy. Mm, and there they are, the wee bastards, right? And they say, right, give your pension book, right? Well, you just give them a wee nip of this. <laughs> on your way! Right, the size of that taser, holy Jack, shit. No, just... <laughs> ah! <laughs> Fuck, I hope he doesn't have a pacemaker. Oh, you've come back, thank Christ. I, I thought I'd kill you. Jesus, Jack, what happened to me? Oh, this bloody thing. I didn't realise the voltage was so high. It's all right, it's all right. You oh. wanted to know. Help us up here. Oh, I'm sorry. Come on, then. Oh. He's oh. tasing back. Get him back. Oh. Oh. Break his dick. That's a bloody lethal weapon, that. Are you all right? I am fine, I'm fine. There's no hurting done. Ah, well. Give that to me, because I'm going to put it in a bin. All right. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you watch an early episode of The Simpsons and the characters don't quite look like they do now. See? You know, the voices are slightly... See, I said, I said the same thing. Like, even in watching so far, watching... Um... Chewing the fat. It's like, it's Jack and Victor, you could tell, but Victor's voice was just not right. Their look was not right, but yes, they're right. It's like the Simpsons. You watch the older Simpsons and they're rugged. They were just edgy. They weren't right. And then uh, over the years, they made them right. And then more recently with the Simpsons, they made them shite again. That's just me. They're different. Mine in particular. Um, yep, see? <laughs> but uh, Told the characters that we always came back to, we always felt very safe doing those characters. Yep. You know, They were like a boy in the ocean. You just like, you went to them because mm -hmm. uh, they were easy to, to write. I mean, I think I think when we look back at Tune the Fat now, I mean, 
when you see how much of Jack and Victor are in the entire, uh, was it four episodes, so four runs? Four runs, yeah. Um, there's about, I think there's about an hour's worth of stuff for Jack and Victor in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, we felt that the best place to always put them is in the pub, and we used to write songs for them mm -hmm. that were sort of reminiscent of songs that you would have heard your grandparents singing, sort of pub songs, and that's how they became. Then uh, uh, popular by us and the fans, but the, <clears throat> we, then we brought it. They touched base on that a couple of times and still gain. There are a couple of pub songs they sang together. It was just like heart. It was warming. So, yeah, it's like you're hearing your father at the pub sing. My, my dad doesn't drink, but I can imagine, like, hearing that. And when I was hearing, I'm like, oh, my gosh, it just takes me back. My memory back to visions of stuff before I was born. Like, old, you know, old. Our, our grandparents, our parents in the pub singing. I love it. And Tam's character, to, because we wanted to sound like a barbershop harmony. I never mm -hmm. managed it once. <laughs> but, uh, and then we brought uh, Paul into it as well. Mm -hmm. If you're going to break a heart, oh. be sure to oh. break a fat girl's heart. They're bigger, <laughs> much bigger. <laughs> if you're going to ruin someone's life, be sure they're not a scale. <laughs> Skinny girls are fine, but when you dump them, they just run and find another. Yep. But yep. when you crush a chubby's heart, she remains with all the fatties on the shelf. <laughs> she remains with all the fatties on the shelf. I haven't seen this one yet on uh, Chewing the Fat. So it was just a natural step that when we got the chance Excuse to do a, a sitcom, that it was the old guys that we took. What delights do you have on offer from your varied and extensive <sighs> menu? Pies. Oh, pies. Do you hear that, Jack? They have pies. Oh, well, that was dandy cakes because I was getting pies, sick of that pies. lobster thermidor, you know? When was the last time we had pies, Jack? Oh. Yesterday. Oh, well, pies it is then. Two pies as they come. Yes, as per usual. Frozen in the middle and red hot round the outside. <laughs> Irresistible. Mm. Tom, uh, could you go a pie? Aye. 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 We'll come back tomorrow and get it. <laughs> it's a joke, it. actually. It's a joke that sums up actors perfectly. And it's how many actors does it take to change a light bulb? Right. Two. One to change the bulb and the other one to say, I could have done that. <laughs> and that's, but we've, mm -hmm. we've forwarded Greg. That's one of the few things that I've never thought. Because I watch them and I go, I, yep. I couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do that. I couldn't right. be as good as that. And exactly. I don't know anybody else that could be as good as that. I think the performances are exceptional. So you two are brothers? Hey, oh, yeah. Oh, brothers, this is right. great. Yes, of course, uh, Jack's a couple of years older than me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start with your lies, Victor. He's actually two years older than I am. So are you retired, the both of you? Oh, yes, yes. We sold our business. Yeah. Oh, what sort of business did you have? A beetroot. <laughs> Sending it all over the world. You'd be surprised how lucrative it is. Yeah, of course, Stole that from Tam. Split it right down the middle, you know. I'm good to myself, I don't mind telling you that, and I have been. Yeah. I was a little bit shrewder with my money. I uh, invested it, mm. tripled it in a year. Mm -hmm. Very clever man, my older brother. Yeah. And sadly, my wife died, but she was independently wealthy, you see. So that brought me right back up on a par financially. <laughs> <laughs> Then, unfortunately, my wife died, yep. and she left me enough to race away back in front of you. <laughs> I think what's great as well is there's a real community spirit, something perhaps mm -hmm. that a lot of communities maybe don't have anymore. Um, it's that thing of everybody looking out for one another, and I think that's what makes it so incredibly real. I mean, all of these characters, and it doesn't matter if it's a character who's got a walk-on mm -hmm. part and says one line, they're all absolutely true. It mm -hmm. gives me great pleasure to be here today. Oh, no, it. It. <laughs> you know, with great admiration, I've watched the community of Craig Lang no, grow and it. flourish. No, you have not. <laughs> My father grew up here in Craig Lang, and he always had the greatest respect for his home. No, I didn't. <laughs> I really wish that he could be here today to see this. No, you don't. I'm sure he would join me in congratulating Craig Lang today as we open this wonderful facility for this building is a magnificent addition to a caring thriving forward-thinking community no it isn't <laughs>
you know, the other characters, you know, were rooting for people that you ostensibly don't like as well. You know, Bobby's a bad man, and we're always yep. at loggerheads with him, but he's your Bobby, and you don't mess with him. Do you know what I mean? If somebody comes in and gives him a half time. He might be a wanker, but he's your wanker. Yeah, he's your exactly, boy. yep. <laughs> that wanker's your bobby. That's how I feel about my neighbors. Yeah, you know what? You're a wanker, but you're my wanker, and I love you, so. <laughs> I love it. That's so good. <laughs> oh, that's bastard. When it's done, you can't get it up. When it's up, you can't get it done. I'd have thought you were a bit young for the old Viagra, Bobby. <laughs> Bobby, out the road. Yeah. Bloody oh. hangs lethal. He's got a wife he's in. Come in, boys. Hello. <laughs> I was kind of mucking about on YouTube and I actually typed in the uh, the still game thing and it had a compilation of all these entrances that um, that Ford and Greg would make oh. to the pub oh. and have a um, Bobby the barman would have a a, a pop at them and every I need to look for that one that that would be fun to check out um, after this every single time and it was a compilation every single time they um, they would come in and sort of be like oh well, here they are you know sort of Markham and Wise and boom boom oh, boom look at who we down. have here yep here they are again you know sort of um, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid boom mm -hmm. boom boom. And uh, it was very, very funny. I mean, and it kind of it just reminded you as to why it is so hugely popular. Oh, here they come, Abbott and Costello. You're putting the beef on, Jack. Oh, that's right. Every time I shag your wife, she makes me a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look who it is. Phyllis and Diller. That's going to be the worst yet, you toss pot. Because <laughs> Phyllis Diller's one person, no two. <laughs> Normally when we come in, Bobby, you get, look, it's Batman and Robin, or Laurel and Hardy, you know, double acts. Yep. What you said there's like, saying, look, it's Frank and Sinatra. Aye, mm. or Bob and Hope, but that's your part. Aye, knock your cell out, son, eh? <laughs> Two pints, prick. Look, Jack, it's Lawrence, Llewell and Bowen. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is kind of slightly prickly area. Uh, their relationship is like a marriage. It is. I think the thing about Jack and Victor is it, it is a platonic love affair, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it is. And, uh, yeah, it I is. Agree. It is. It's very, very modern. Like very modern family. Ford's reaction. Uh, but they do love nice. each other, and and they look out for each other. And when when, you when see how comfortable he is talking about it when he hears like that. With the body language here. Oh yes, well, it's a platonic love affair. <laughs> <laughs> it's about friendship, real deep friendships. Yeah. And although, you know, although they're both very Scottish, and that's why I love it so much, um, they're never going to tell each other that they love each other, but they really do. They really do. They do anything for one another, despite all the banter and the nonsense. I did it again. Mm -hmm. I'm no, I'm arms. not doing that. Oh, my, my, my arms are perfectly natural right, okay, here. Fair enough. Oh, eyes off. Marlon Jack. What is it? Is that Victor? What's Victor doing in your house at seven o'clock in the morning? Uh, he came across for butter, a line of butter. Oh my yes, god, one of the best episodes Jack. of the whole series. <laughs> <laughs> This is one of the best, probably one of the best moments in Scottish television history coming up here. <laughs> With the whole the ass cream and shit. Oh my god. It's your turn to mop the land, and, and I was just wondering if you wanted me to do it. Aye, that would be smashed. That would be very good of you, eyes. I mop the land. And... <laughs> exactly. you. I can't beat that. Who's that? Isa. Who else would have. Hi! Listen, take a look at this, Jack. It's getting bigger. Is it ready? Pop. Oof. That's like crack a tour, that. It's a cracker right enough. It's an absolute belter. Yes, please. <laughs> That's one of the best episodes of the entire series. Let me know in the comments what was your favorite episode in the entire series. It could be anywhere between season one or series one and series nine. Let me know your favorite episode in the comments, but the one that everyone thought that they were gay, my God, you can't beat that. But it's important to get it across, you know, that they're real people with depth and they struggle and they, you know, they, mm -hmm. they, they, you know, they pine when the other one's away and, yep. and because people do. And, and uh, that may have accidentally became 
<coughs> what part of the heart of the show is. It might be. I don't, we, we can't pinpoint exactly, but it is. People like it for different reasons. But lots of people have said to us that they yeah. like the, the sad bits as well. Yeah, the show's about companionship. So whenever that is, is threatened in the show, when that companionship is threatened, it, it, it hurts the characters. They can yep. be funny, sad. They can they can make you really make you laugh one minute and make you cry the next. Exactly. That is the real hundred percent. She's right. And brilliant acting. Yep. It's just you know, it tugs at your heartstrings. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why was I there do that? Eh? Uh, how long's Gina away now, Jack? Hmm, about two weeks. It'll be ten years. Mm. Ten years. That means my bet is away twelve years. So racing away for his new eh? I do have a question. Um, I know Greg has blue eyes in real life. Is there a reason why he is throughout the whole show he wore uh, brown um, contacts? I mean, his eye, his blue eyes. It is, it's got great blue eyes. My blue eyes, they're okay. Uh, Greg has the best blue eyes. Uh, I don't understand why he had to wear the brown contacts. Maybe you guys know. Let me let me also know that in the, com the comments. Uh, that's uh, kind of a bit bit. I'm not. I'm not going through all that again. You know, Jack, it's it's not my place to to tell you how long a man should mourn, but ten years. It's a pretty long time. Ten years is plenty. Yeah. Uh, going on a date doesn't it betray Jean's memory. Nope. She'd want you to be happy. I think so. Yeah, I agree. Why don't you get doing that shop? Ask that woman out, eh? Besides, they did easy. Exactly, because I remember watching this scene, talking about, you know, his, his wife who passed away. And I was feeling so sad. And then there's fucking Victor with the goddamn joke. It just makes you start laughing to the point you're crying anyways. My first appearance in show game was as Edith. Mm, oh, look who we got here. Mm. And I was a blind date to Victor. Jack had asked Barbara, who played Bly, the lovely Eileen McCallum. She played Barbara, and I played her sister, Edith. Now, they didn't know what I looked like. I remember we were filming, we came in the bus, and Jack yep. and Victor were waiting at the bus stop. This is bloody torture. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Jack. Hello, Victor. This is my sister. Mm. He did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hi, boys. <laughs> Hello, lads. Hi, Winston. Oh. Hello, ladies. I'm Winston. Oh, hello, Winston. <laughs> Step back. You still born? Hi. Here, which one of you two unlucky bastards is saddled with a munchkin? <laughs> That's it. Where are you going? Hey, I'm not sitting in my local with that thing, Jack. Oh, well, that's just perfect, isn't it? You're going here while they're leaving me with these two women. I only right. saw one woman, Jack. I don't know what that other one is. A munchkin, sure. Shut up. Once you've established all these characters as fully blown characters, then when you start to embark on writing a new show, you say, well, let's say, for instance, somebody showed up with a big red nose. You, you, you're, you're writing immediately because you got you know exactly how these characters are going to react to that. Mm -hmm. That is, I would be away telling everybody, oh, there's a man where you want to see this man's nose, honest to God. And, and uh, Winston and Tam would, could not avoid talking about it or pointing at it. Right. Uh, Bobby would probably drop a, a bottle when he's seen it for the very first yeah. time. You, you can, you're off in one because you know how the, the community would react to this thing happening. Exactly. Thanks, sir. Jack, are you staying in at this time? Well, we're out with a couple of friends if it was any of your bloody business. <laughs> and by the way, while I'm at it, when are you letting Winston back in? When he apologises. Mm. Aren't you uh, going to introduce me? No, certainly. Barbara. Hello. Hello, Barbara. And Edith. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey, who's her? Hey, well, we'll have our usual. Uh, have Gin and tonic, please. Edith. Fine again, it's. Fine again, it's. 
So after the date, they go away and they go to the bus stop to go home. And Barbara, Eileen McCallum, she kisses Jack and then my character Edith goes to kiss Greg. See you soon then, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, eh? <laughs> That's what everybody mentions, actually. That's how clever they are. They say, they laugh love that bit when he grabs your head and he goes like that, or then shoves you on the bus. It's brilliant. Yeah. So I just remember that. That was just so funny. Really funny. The one scene I was right. ever in, still game, was I was playing a character called Martin. Yeah, and it's a Martin. 30 second, 40 second scene. And his mother has bought Empire Biscuits instead of snowballs and he loses the ride. I want the snowballs! I want an Empire Biscuit. I want a snowball. Me snowballs? Yeah. You stupid. Oh, cow! Relax, man. <laughs> You've got an Empire Biscuit. I'm no yeah. one, an Empire Biscuit. I want a snowball. <laughs> Taxi! <laughs> Perfect timing, my God. Fucking genius. Maybe if you have a job in Martin, you're mocking right your ass for you, Martin. <laughs> and I get that shouted at me at least once a week, to this day, by people. And I can never remember what they're talking about. It takes me to be surprised every single time. Yeah. But if you've, if you've sneezed in still game, it stays with you for the rest of eternity. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud of it. It's mm. great. When I came up to Scotland, it would be fair to say, and I don't think I'm exaggerating, that of the people who come out to see it. Hey, big man, I saw you in, it's nine, m more than nine out of ten, ten times, it's Stewie Maduri. Well, I'm just under six foot six, and I think I had heels on, which were maybe four or five inches, so I must have been six foot ten, and then I had a hat on top of that, so I must have been somewhere near seven feet. I felt huge. <laughs> <laughs> Smashing your hair in this. Me boiler, Victor. A couple of things. People remember the, the throwing the thing out the window, going at the nets. They remember the drink. And they also remember, and thank you for this, boys, they remember the 18-inch pile of shite in the toilet. So it would be fair to say, yes, it's followed me around, in some senses, like a bad smell. Calm down, Isa. Look. Look. What was supposed to be Luke? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that big innocent gun in that. Oh, big bastard. He must have had to have stood up to get his cell off of that. What am I going to do? I can't hear that. Bar it with a new brush. Break any bits. Oh, I'll half pick up Domestis, burn it to death. Domestis! <laughs> One of the main things I love about it is <clears throat> the fact that lines are crossed. Uh, very often, and I love that. I love it because <clears throat> what is also obvious Excuse and me. evident is that underneath that kind of broad, very broad, over the line humor. Yeah, you really can't do that in uh, American shows. Uh, pardon the belch. <laughs> I thought I was muted. <laughs> Whoops. But uh, hey, it wouldn't be a still game episode without me belching, right? Um, but no, it's like, God, it's like American comedies in the last probably 24 25 years they're just basically just walking on eggshells afraid to cross any lines it's like why do you think Seinfeld was so successful the only show I can think of right off the bat that that does cross lines every episode is Family Guy but they get away with it it's a cartoon but shows like this absolutely genius they're decent people. I mean, a lot of the characters we've got are based on people. Mine's is my Uncle Barney, Greg's is his grandfather, Sammy. Um, Tam is based on uh, a friend of mine, uh, Martin. Uh, mm. I'd say his surname, Kane, who's very miserable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so we, we're just drawing for people that we know and, you know, planting it on the other people. 300, not a halfpenny less. Right, Tam, you heard the man, 300 quid. I've got him out of barrel here. I'm the only bidder. I'll say 150. You hell, you miserable bastard. You listen to me. 
Mm. This is your chance to do the right thing. Be generous. The car's worth 300. You've got that in your pocket. Now give that to his money. <laughs> Three hundred. Thanking you. Thanking you. Keys. <laughs> I love how the fridge fell through the moment after the transaction was completed. Like, there's no taking backsies at this point. You now have a vehicle with a traveling refrigerator. Hey, at least your uh, your beer is going to be kept cold. I think as characters go, they do have their traits, and they can be exaggerated as they would be in any sort of drama. Mm -hmm. But the characters themselves are funny. And they're sad at yeah. times because they're real. I think that's the, that's the, that's mm -hmm. the fact. People watch it, and it is very real life. People can see the characters in people. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not outrageous. Uh, they're not unbelievable characters. And I think that's what's gave it the longevity. Willie, can I just look at the state you're in? Are you riding a bike, Willie? Flavoured or unflavoured? Hi. It's a gift from my girlfriend. <laughs> aye, aye, we saw the pair of you doing at the cafe, aye, aye. Chris, she's half your age, man. Are you no a bit old for a bike, Willie? Nonsense. She got me a bike, keep me fit. Keep you fit for what? Oh, you're not actually. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not your business. What a thing to ask. I would never discuss anything personal like that. Any condoms, Navi? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, nothing, nothing. Sorry, Willie. Ask again. I won't laugh. Condoms. I'm needing condoms. Flavoured <clears throat> <clears throat> or flavoured? <laughs> flavoured. <laughs> oh, get it up, yes! I've got your boot. But Naveed's such a great character because the corner shop is such a part of people's lives oh, now. Yeah. You know? yep. He's such a great character because he, he is obviously Asian. And he's still got that thing at the back of his, you know, that accent, but also the glasses of Egypt. And I, funny enough, I used to uh, live in um, Edinburgh and there was a guy exactly like that. And I go, what about the bloody hibs? What the hell did they think they were doing on Saturday? You know, that accent, you know. There was a guy that I went to college mm. where they used to talk like that all the time. It used to crack me up. Um, so I knew that that accent was there for the taking and, you know, don't worry, I've signed the paperwork, it's all above board and legal, I spoke to the provost about it. Ah, oh, Jack, Victor. Morning, David. Aye, aye, aye. Cheers, uh, Tom. Heard about the big guard game? Sounds gallus. Well, you're welcome to join us. Poker, eh? Uh, the green bays, whether to raise, whether to call. Oh, the tension, the splashing sound the chips mm. make as they are thrown into the ever-growing pot. Somebody wins, somebody loses. Who do you play next? I'll stay night if you fancy it. I'll be there with bells on. Nice. <laughs> ah, that's right, he can't gamble, he's Muslim. Son of a bitch. Guess he can't go to Vegas. Muslims don't gamble. Ne gambling, ne drinking. What a riot. No, no, we just like to sit about the house playing cut plunk. Mina is an incredibly popular uh, character in Still Game, and, and for very good reason. Um, I just think the writing there is just absolute genius. They have this lovely, oh, yeah. spiky, sarky relationship, at the heart of which is a nugget of pure love, but you know, mm -hmm. you have to, a few layers to get through to get to it, yep. but it's there. And there's clearly, she's running the show. I mean, there's, there's no question about it. She's in the back shop pulling the strings. Yeah. Yeah, what? You just got the all the moves, huh? The essence of, of comedy, of course, as we all know, is things going wrong. Um, just like the essence of drama is conflict. I mean, you cannot make a good drama about a, yeah. a happily married couple with three lovely children living in Surrey. That's it's true. That ain't a drama. And Almost all really good comedy is about Another great episode. well, a things going wrong, but also uh, dysfunctional families. Yep. And it occurred to me watching Still Game the other day that that uh, Craig Lang is essentially a hilariously dysfunctional community. Oh, oh Jesus! Oh, oh, we'll oh. Need to phone another. Oh. This lassie's having a wee. Oh. Oh, right. I don't think I'm going to be able to wait. 
I'm bursting! Is there a doctor in here? Oh, it's all right. Jack and Victor have just passed oh, their yeah. first aid certificate. Break them for you. Come on, it's OK. Oh my god, this is this is G they fall down like bowling pins. It's awesome. Is that uh, the heat? I mean, you so high. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the writing is very clever and one of the biggest laughs that we had because we you know as the cast we would go to the uh, the audience screenings where they would record the laughter track and i know for a fact that they've had to it's one of the few occasions where they've had to actually reduce the laughter and actually have it dip under because there was too much laughter wow and one of the biggest sort of roller coaster laughs i experienced was it was the episode where winston wins the was it the 30 or the 40 grand um from stevie the bookie yeah. oh That's 33 grand. <laughs> you're up 500 quid <laughs> Thank you, Stevie. Thank you for keeping my money warm. Now get into that safe and get me paid. Look at you, Stevie. You're actually thinking about doing it again, aren't you? Doing yep. a runner. What are you going to do this time? Cut your balls off and come back as your sister? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can tell that they took down the laughter. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Oh, the foot to the, the window is fucking is, golden. Is that you have to get back to the place you were at the beginning. So you're, you're, mm -hmm. at the, you're at the start point, and whatever happens, happens. You know, the A story, the B story takes you somewhere. Yep. But you have to get back. I mean, that's the whole point is, in a sitcom, you're sort of trapped. And you need to get back to being trapped so you can carry that on. Very so true. you've got, what, maybe a minute to go left of this episode of Still Game. Winston's 30 grand richer. And you're thinking, well, what's going to happen now? Mm-hmm. He's 30 grand richer, has everything changed? You're not going to do anything stunning with that money now, are you? No, no, no danger. Oh, oh, but his face, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was as if I'd planted one right in his balls. <laughs> <laughs> Boof! Right in the Niagara Falls. <laughs> Boof! Right in the Costa del Souls. <laughs> right in the Vina McCall's. <laughs> Boof! <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> but in the space of a minute, he's lost his leg and he's lost the 30 grand. <laughs> That's a beautiful example yeah. as well as the A story being the, the money, the B story being Winston's leg, just tying in a big, fat, lovely knot. Yeah. It's been for 40 as well, but the two of us have our favourite sitcoms and our preference for sitcoms tend to be ensemble pieces, things like like Cheers or yes. something like Seinfeld yep, where see. the guy in the middle is like the satellite and all, everything else moves around about him, you know? Mm -hmm. um, shows like that, uh, they, they, they just grow out organically for the audience as well, yep. I think, you know? Yep. And everybody has a favourite character, uh, as do we. Um, and that's kind of a fun show to write. It's a much more fun show mm -hmm. to write than a show that the audience is only interested in one or two characters and if, if you do a subplot with another character, they're, they're not so keen on it because they're not invested in it. But the audience is invested in Bobby and Isa and yeah. Winston, and and we can we can give them the ball to run with it, and 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 run with it they do. Oh, my balls come to get me! <laughs> Where the hell have you been? Get in the car, Jack. I'm not in any mood to piss about. Right, we have to get in. <laughs> oh no, the vomit scene. Oh shit, here we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Bloody minute. We've all got the same place, driver. That's true. Victor. <laughs> driver, I mean Victor. <laughs> yeah, what the bloody hell's that smell? Oh, oh fucked up. Oh, he is, he's a yeah. about, eh? Jesus, Eric. Are you gonna, are you, even watching this episode the first time, I was looking at Eric like, oh, fuck. He's about to just vomit everywhere. Don't open that in this car. Yeah, it's over here. Take a chip. Oh, no. 
my flat, my first time, fuck off my face. What's my young man? Of course, it's not that far. Oh, no, 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 it's up looking to me, but... Oh, oh Christ. Christ. Listen, the next terrible. Keep the bloody noise, dude. Victor's has been good enough to get out of his bed and come and get us. You're not taking a liberty stinking out of his car like that. For God's sake. I think one of the main strengths is that it is a team effort. Uh, All of us together make the show. And everybody's got different favourite characters. Some people will say, oh, I love Isa, she's just like my next door neighbour, or I love Naveed, or I love Tam, whoever. And mm -hmm. I think the boys have been generous in that they, they don't always write themselves the best lines. Sometimes some of my favourite lines are other people's, and it's... You know, a lot of writers wouldn't do that. They would keep all the best lines yep, for themselves. Exactly. It wasn't really always about generosity, though, because Ford and I had a lot of hangovers during those shows, and it was. All and going back to Seinfeld, you, you you go back to Seinfeld. Jerry didn't always have the best lines. Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld did not write the best lines for Jerry to say. It was just it was a group, you know, a group effort through that show. Just like Still Game, Still Game was. The same way. I think that's why I really like Still Game. Is it just, in in a sense, it reminds me of Seinfeld, just because it's like everybody will get a line throughout the series, throughout the season, throughout the show. That just makes you go, "Holy shit, that was hilarious!" It's always good to get the other cast members to take the bulk of the weight of the episode and carry us. Uh, and I remember one time um, <laughs> there was an episode that was 27 minutes long and Colin Gilbert came to us and went, you need two minutes. And we were like, well, I'm not writing a new piece to learn for two minutes. Yeah. We've got Jane McCary and we wrote her a monologue in the lift and it's that yeah. scene from the lift where she guesses where Jack and Victor are going to go mm -hmm. just by the way oh. they're dressed and we don't say a word. Right. And we gave, it to, we gave it to Jane half an hour before we filmed it. Went, That's going in love in about uh, half an hour. So if you could learn oh, that, she nailed fine. it. This is and she learned it and did it in one take. One take. <laughs> Yeah, that's, it, but that's that's what she's like. Oh, look at you, Stu. Oh, done up smart. Nice jackets. One fucking take? Bet he's gone. Oh, we're not going to the clansmen. No turned out like that. Must be somewhere good, eh? Somewhere special. Eh? What would that be? What would the reason be? A wedding? <laughs> no, it's not a wedding. You'd have buttonholes on for a wedding. It's not a funeral because of the tie. And it's not a court case, I'd have heard about that one. <laughs> it's a day out somewhere. Somewhere that isn't a Craig Lang. Yep. It's a tune. It's a tune, isn't it? <laughs> I know where you're going. But why? Are you celebrating something? Your birthday? No. Two old pals going into the tune. Two old pals celebrating. Celebrating me. Celebrating just been all pals. Oh! That's it, isn't it? Like an anniversary. Woo <laughs> that's it, isn't it? <laughs> you spooky bitch. She's creepy with that. Ah, uh, she gives me the fear. She has a <laughs> one one take. I gotta think about that. One freaking take and they handed her the script thirty minutes before. That's fucking legendary. That's that's remarkable. Joy to play. First of all, because you're always comfortable. Yep. You know where you are with Isa. You've got polyester, layers of cheap wool and yep. a comfortable shoe. Yeah. Oh. Shoe, sure, Isa. What are you off to? Navids. I'm away today, my shift. That was close. We got off lately there. Tyson, I'm glad I caught you there. I completely forgot to tell you. Tell me what, Isa. Well, I never buy the times. There's usually nothing in it you haven't read in the real papers. Exactly. Just the same old news again later on. Rubbish, really. And there's no point buying twice for it. Anyhow, <laughs> don't ask me why, but I bought one. And I was fucking through it and gave something like to do. What are you doing, Winston? I'm trying to fast forward you to the punchline. <laughs> Get to the end of the story. I will. I was flicking through it. The end. <laughs> Uh, the intimation set. The end, mind. <laughs> Wally McIntosh is dead. Thank you. Although at times they do horrible things to Isaac or they'll say horrible things, they always have her back. You know, yeah. they, they, they 
decorated her flat for her. They, you know, when Harry, when she was trying to get rid of Harry, Winston, who doesn't have a great deal of time for Isa, still came yeah. and looked after Isa. Pretended to be to go to bed with her and everything, which is one of my yeah. favourite scenes. Because <laughs> we go. were filming it, we had to do about twenty takes because of, we kept laughing. Of course, and he fell out the bed and hit his head. Oh no! <laughs> Isa, sweetheart. Still cold. <laughs> Still cold. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> the sets. And this is why I love Isa. And I've in the beginning, I did fire find her a little annoying, but what I love about Isa is. She has everybody's back, and when things get, you know, bad for her, the boys rally around her, and they have her back, too. That is true friendship. You don't see that much anymore. Something bad happens to somebody, everybody turns their back on them. But the way they ha the relationship was done with Isa, we all need an Isa in our life. Yeah. They may annoy the shit out of us. They're like, oh, here we go again. A long ass story. But when the going gets tough, they're there for you and you're there for them. Terrific fun to work on. It's hard work, but it, it's great fun because everyone knows each other so well. I think the cast are a joy to work with. They all know their characters inside out. Therefore, they can relax and not be nervous about the work they're doing, which means they can have fun doing that work. What have you been on recently, Paul? Uh, Coxie and I have just finished a detective series set in Holland called Clever Clogs. <laughs> <laughs> when we were uh, filming Tiger, a lot of the same crew would uh, finish Tiger and go and work on Still Game. They seemed to fit in together. And they would all go off and they would come back to, to start filming again in Tiger. And they would come back with all these amazing stories about what a laugh they had on the set of Still Game. Yep. There were so many carry-ons, wind-ups. They even had quizzes at lunchtime. Whereas on the set of Tiger, all I had was Alex Norton uh, snoring in the corner of the trailer. Uh, so yeah, I was always really jealous that Still Aww. Game just sounded like this brilliant uh, job to work on and sounded like such a laugh. Whereas all we did was pull dead bodies out of bin bags in the Garski Road. Exactly. Oh, Jesus. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> This way! And the boy you did he! Oh, oh, Christ! Oh, 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 <laughs> well, subtlety didn't really come into it with uh, Still Game. I, I got a phone call from my agent saying that. Um, oh, Paul Young, what, he was of, so uh, Still Game good. To meet me, and, uh, I went along to see Michael Hines, and he gently explained that the character was uh, one who had um, almost superhuman hearing. Yeah. Uh, uh, hearing, of course, ears. Here, yeah, Victor. Don't be annoying him. As old as he is, yeah, he's he, still he. bloody handy, and he is doing us a favour. Look, let's just not be hanging about sitting there while he rattles on about the war. Yeah, yeah, he played well with his giant ears. Yeah, giant ears, and he looked at the character like superhuman, you know, hearing. Yeah, I've got giant ears, you know. Comfortable in yourself is a huge thing, not only for, you know, television but youtube in life just be comfortable with who you are for christ's sake i got the biggest nose on youtube and you know what i could smell anything out at any time sure job he'll hear you oh i can hear through bloody walls and on it ah you can <laughs> what can i do for you <laughs> But when I was about 17, a uh, casting director in London said to me, oh, my dear boy, you will get nowhere in this business if you don't have your ears pinned back. Fortunately, I didn't pay any attention to that because if I had, I would never have been in still game. 
never been shug the lug. So, of course, I turn up at makeup and wardrobe uh, on the first day. The, the, the wardrobe is not very complicated. Makeup, no. I thought, well, I'm, I'm one of the oldest people in the show. Most of the other guys are ageing up. I'm playing my own age. Mm -hmm. So they maybe just have to put a few wee lines on me. And then suddenly Julie Dorrit Keenan comes out with a huge pair of rubber ears. <laughs> Ignominy. As if they're not big enough, they're going to mm -hmm. put rubber ears mm -hmm. on as well. Oh, dear me. But there's a box in makeup mm -hmm. at, at the comedy unit that just says Shug's Lugs. I think <laughs> that's rather nice. That's sweet. Shuggy! Whoa, whoa, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm going to come over and blow the tits off us about Timbrook. Uh, right enough, aye. Uh, trick. <laughs> what do you suppose is in the bag? Ach, the eye buys that. Shitey breed, you know. Snappy shopper. <laughs> 22 <laughs> pence a loaf. <laughs> yep. That's because he's a miserable old bastard, there. Eh? <laughs> Sun bless! Best the gear! <laughs> I love him. One of my favorite side characters of the entire show was him. He was so freaking good. He was like, he's like kind of like their James Bond or MacGyver type guy. He would always like, Anytime that they would need like electrical help, you know, with with technology, they would go to him. Anytime they would need someone that could hear a whisper, they would go to him. It's just I love that character. He was written well. He played it well. <sighs> Another great character in the show. Uh, my favorite episode or, or to be better, my favorite moment of still game is uh uh Winston's accumulator. Uh, you know, and he's having the thing with Steve the bookie and it's constantly going on and coming yep, in and he's yep. winding up and so it's just good. the moment uh, when he comes in the bookies and it's just coming up. Steve's just putting the pens in the wee holes as Winston's just building to erupt yep. and erupt and erupt and it's just the comic timing and it's beautifully done and then bang, as the last one goes in, you can't hear him, you just see him mouthing all his explicit shouting, you effing this, effing that and it's, you hate it when I win and you love yep. it when I lose. That's right. Money flows into your till all day, Stevie. Right. That's not enough, is it? No. Nope. With my money, you have to gloat. <laughs> a gloating bookie. I mean, that's unheard of in the bookie world. You must be the worst bookie in Britain. <laughs> you lie, Stevie boy. One day I'm gonna win. And I'm gonna win big. And then you'll be gutted. In fact, you'll be beyond gutted. And then I'll be the one who's gloating. And boy, can I gloat, Stevie boy. You might so good. start gloating. You gloat. <laughs> So damn good. <laughs> it's, it's a standout moment for me. The thing we haven't mentioned Same. is how beautifully written it is. And how two guys in who I think when they started, they must have been in their early 30s. How have they not brought up his character as the bus driver? Because that's another one of those characters where I think of still game. I think of him, rest in peace, uh, a hell of a career, haggard from Harry Potter and then in still game he's done so many other great roles but his character in still game was so good the overworked overstressed bus driver that just snapped one day all over donuts it was perfect very 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 well written it was awesome in the late 20s and I actually um, they, they quite sweetly asked me to write the intro to the book and uh, I said, how can two guys that age uh, write so beautifully about a couple of grave dodgers? Right. Well, as they would call them. Mm, yeah, <laughs> the exactly. How do they do that? I and mean, I can't think of anyone else who's done it. Feeble. We're getting feeble. That's a word for it. First the body goes, yep. then the mind. Yeah. I mean, imagine not being able to catch a rolling flask, for God's sake. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ah, oh, didn't you beat yourself up, Jack? It's no your fault. I'm the dafter that's shoved off the shelf. <laughs> I mean, take yesterday, for instance, lads, you know. 20 minutes it took me to open a can of bloody peas. Fudge. I couldn't do it. I've ended up making a tiny wee hole and getting them out pee by pee. That's <laughs> yeah. evil. Where do you see this? Oh! You know, I should just spring I forgot about that! But I've timed it 15 full minutes for that to reset. <laughs> Put your finger in there. <laughs> I will not put my finger in your bloody leg. It's such a brave thing to do. And you can imagine the pitch. Imagine, imagine right, you're, <laughs> right. You're, 
Uh, you're the guy who, who puts stuff on, on BBC telly. A great idea, right? A couple of 32-year-old guys are going to dress up and behave like a couple of guys in their mid-70s. It'll right. be hilarious. You'll be going, uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. The good thing about the fact that it's young people playing old people is that there's a big, long lifespan to the show. So if you look at Dad's Army, where most of the cast probably started out in their late 60s, mm -hmm. you probably get five, six good years before people get too old. Ford and Greg started this when I think they were probably late 30s, early 40s. They could make this for 40 years and still look the same and just use less makeup each. Well, he's right. I think, I want to say Ford, is he four or five, maybe six years older than Greg? Oops, sorry about that. Um, so there's, there is an age gap already between these two, but they're playing characters that grew up together that spent their entire, I don't know, life together between the age of 12 and to the 72. You know, 60 years together. It's absolutely brilliant. The show is absolutely brilliant. She yeah. Ball games, can you not read? Shut up, you dick. <laughs> Shut up, you dick. The other thing that's terribly funny about it is it's not remotely um, age specific. My children, who are 16 and 21, quite often, if there's nothing on the telly, will just throw in a still game Aww. and we'll all sit down and watch it as a family and laugh. Yeah. Till our sides hurt, despite the fact we've all seen it about 17 times. Exactly. You know? I'm in the there's same There's not boat. many shows you can say that about. It's no. amazing that. It's, it's rolled over and rolled over for generation to generation. People talk about, somebody said to me, their dad handed them down his DVDs <laughs> as, if, as if it was, you needed it to survive. Yep. Oh, the ass slap. <laughs> See, once we uh, shut this place up. Aye. You don't fancy going for a curry, do you? Aye. I love curry. Good. Good. <laughs> I better go and get set up then. Aye. Aye. Off you go. That's a nice ass, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> She was a hottie. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm 40, almost 41 years old. If I could get a date with someone that hot. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, oh. Shut your quiz up your ass. That a girl. I love the feistiness too. Table for one at the Indian star tonight, Bobby. <laughs> My bit of advice I'd always say to Emdy though. Uh, whenever they find one of these uh, still game repeats, or fingers crossed, if you go and watch a new series, is uh, if you're recording it, mm -hmm. always record the program after it as well, right? Now I don't care if it's Miranda or Citizen Can or something like that. Mm -hmm. You don't need to watch it, but always record the program after it because the amount of times I've been sat there, episode is nearly finished. And up come the credits at the end. And then it cuts off. And then you miss that last snippet at the end. Those are always gold. They're perfect to just kind of wrap everything up in a bow in a box and say, there you go. There's there's the entire show. And you think to yourself, still got that wee magic bit to go at the end, the very, very end. Can he wait? Now it's nearly there. Boom. End of recording, right up across the screen. Yeah. It is the most annoying thing in the world. And you hang And that goes with Netflix. Like Still Game is on Netflix here in the US, but it always like you know, during the credits, it counts down to the next episode and cuts it. I didn't realize there's these little snippet things that after the credits for Still Game until I started reacting to it on YouTube and people said let it play until the very, very end. And sure enough, it's basically like finding an Easter egg in a video game. You're like, oh my God, I didn't know that was there. This is awesome. And what was that last wee bit going to be? Because it's always a gem, you know? What a heat I've got. Oh, this this is a, 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 a top fiver right here. Is that thinking about slapping Margot's ass? Mm. Stupid bastard, Bobby. It's 
the hope? The police was mobbed. Yep. It was a cat and night. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Fancy another ride, Bobby. <laughs> Dorothy Paul was in still game. She played uh, Frances, my wife's sister. Yep. And uh, she was she was, she was interested in me in that way, you know. And uh, I, 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 I too was very interested in her. Very attractive, very attractive woman, Dorothy Paul. When I was off, it's, it's just another great episode. Like they keep touching on these episodes that I point put at some of the best episodes they've ever done. These are top tier episodes of Still Game, and they're reaching on it. I hate that this is the story so far because I don't think there is a documentary this well with the rest of the story. But yeah, the story so far, this has been brilliant. We still have another 10 minutes together, so I'm very excited. For this part, I was absolutely thrilled. Imagine being offered the part of the romantic interest. Me, eh? <laughs> and especially working with uh, yeah. Tam, because I mean, Tam's a youngster. But it, he plays the part so well, you just feel you're with somebody of your own age. Mm -hmm. Aye, it, was, it was exciting. It was exciting mm -hmm. for an old man. <laughs> I'll just get you a tea for the bus, Molly. Oh, well, I'll come with you then. Don't be stupid, you've got the case. You stay and keep Molly company. All right, so. What's the matter, Tam? Do you not want to be alone with me? That's a problem, see? I want to be alone with you. Tonight, so I'm good. For so the rest good. of my life. Yeah. Your tight fistedness drives me crazy, sweetheart. <laughs> Gets me harder than the crossword in the hell. <laughs> but this wedding band says we can never be. I'm married to your sister, Molly. I saw no wedding band, by the way. Ooh. Any feelings I have for you ain't worth the hell of beans. <gasps> Got your tin of sweeties and all, Molly. Thanks. Oh, that was quick. Hey, you look after yourself. Yep. Here's one last freebie for you, Tam. <laughs> right now, mommy and daddy button. <laughs> I loved an episode that was with Mark Costello and I. Uh, I think it was called Seconds Out. Oh, and that's it's a, a good girl one. moves into the area where a pizzeria. Uh, and we both are fighting yep. for our attention, basically, and trying to get fit and stuff. And Bobby's useless as always, <laughs> and useless yep. in love as always, but does his best to win this girl over, only to find out that Jim Watt is our father, <laughs> which <laughs> so we find good. out at the very end of the episode because we're going to fight over her, and you can imagine how that pans out. So they sent a script through, and true enough, it was an old, worn-out, retired boxer. They'd written the part, but it was myself. I had to play myself in it. So I thought, well, surely I can manage that in my That's acting cool. debut, I can play myself. So I did that. And you know, it's one of the best uh, decisions I've ever made. It was great fun. The whole experience. He was a, what, a middleweight boxer? I don't, I don't remember. Let me know in the comments. I don't remember if he was middleweight or featherweight. What, what was terrific. I loved every bit of it. The, the cast were terrific, you know, and, and everything about it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Now, these two fighters are going to battle nice it out lassie. over three rounds to settle an argument to find out who gets to take out some wee lassie. Now, they're not professionals, as you'll soon realise. <laughs> I tell you, she must be some bit of stuff if these two fellas are willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe mm -hmm. for her. She's got great tits. <laughs> 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 and after this fight... They're going to be my tits. Yeah. <laughs> Are you boys sure you want to do this? Listen, Jim, if you'd seen this bit of gear, you'd pull the gloves on and all. Don't take her word oh, for it, Jim. Oh, there she is. There she's there. Look, would you not walk out of broken glass for a half hour like that, eh? Stacy. Hello, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> I got a fair amount of fame uh, becoming a world boxing champion in the city of Glasgow who, who love their sporting <laughs> heroes, yeah. but nothing prepared me for the fame I was going to get through appearing on Still Game. Of there course. is one thing that we should say, though, that we, we were away for seven years, and yeah. the odds are in us about how we'd fell out and all the rest of it, and we come back after seven years having yeah. absolutely no earthly idea whether we'd be wanted back, and the audience just completely embraced the fact that we were back and just jumped all over us, and that's a fantastic feeling, isn't it? I mean, from what I feel from the audience, from people I know uh, through YouTube, through comments and everything, it was seven years in between, you know, series, what, six and to seven. But it, to them, time never passed. The boys are back. The crew is back. Let's see what kind of shenanigans they get into. That, to me, proves... Not only is this the best comedy in Scotland, this is a top five comedy worldwide of all time. Because for fans to just say, all right, you know, Greg and Ford kind of had a small falling out, but they were able to reconcile and said, screw it, let's bring back the show. Okay. And for fans, it's like time never passed. Like for me, the only thing that really changed between six and seven was, uh, Methadone Mick, you know, Methadone Mick was brought in. And yeah, they did look a little older. BBC took over, so it was kind of more, I guess, rounded out more. Yeah, more rounded out, better, I guess, better cameras, better better sets, better this and that. But it's just like, it just doesn't seem like time passed. Excuse me, when it did, it was seven years and they brought it back, which is beautiful. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic. It's great. I mean, uh, you know, seven years would have killed any other show. Still, game fans are amazing, absolutely amazing. We've got the tattoos because I, but I'm, a, I'm a massive fan of Still Game. Yeah, I did go through six hours of pain to get to get these tattoos, but it was well worth it. That's no better way to honor Still Game to get Jack and Victor on my thighs. Even still to this day, my wife doesn't even know how much I paid for them. <laughs> right, so there what, is, what is Tam's wife called? Still games, the best Scottish comedy that's ever been created. Question two. It makes me feel pretty nostalgic thinking back to when I was younger growing up with Still Game. Uh, most excellent show. It's just, it's, it's brilliant. It's just Glasgow humour. Just, it's absolutely brilliant. Would you? What about you? It's typical Scottish humour. Everybody in Scotland just gets it. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's not even been on for a few years, and yet, like, any time it's on BBC One, everybody's like, right, that's what yeah. I'm watching. It's, it's hilarious. Facebook news feed is just full of, like, yeah, yeah, still games, game, brilliant. Yeah. It's been brilliant from the journalist's point of view covering this story this year because I have had an endless succession of stories. Uh, the Still Game story has been the story that keeps on giving, but possibly one of the best nights of my, my career, uh, and certainly a night I will never forget, was uh, the night I ended up uh, gatecrashing the Still Game pub quiz with the cast of Still Game. Ford Kiernan had got some t-shirts printed. Still Game 2014. So we all put them on and headed off down Sucky Hall Street. And uh, we were quite confident brilliant. as a cast we would win Absolute it. Why would you brilliant. not be confident we were yeah. the cast? But we came in and uh, there was a lot of screaming and cheering and, woo, <laughs> and uh, murals on the wall of the cast and uh, Beautiful. still yes. game fans. That's what they were, these people. Real still game fans. Yeah. And we weren't long into the quiz when we realised what we are going to get a doing. It was a pretty mental night by the end of it. Uh, everyone was up dancing in the slosh. Ford Keenan was in the, the sound booth singing. It was, uh, it was a mental night, one we won't forget. The fantastic thing about the way these dates were extended, you know, they were extended uh, from September into October, and then they were extended back the way, uh, you know, at the start of the run. Um, because the, the demand was so high, um, was that they knocked U2 out of uh, playing at the Hydro, so one of the world's biggest rock bands wow. uh, were stymied by Still Game. They were knocked out of playing this enormous <laughs> venue in a big showpiece concert oh by two old men in their flat caps. It was fantastic. <laughs> The 
Oh, just for watching. Oh, because this shower of wankers live at some bastard arena, you know? <laughs> <laughs> They've not performed together for years. They've settled their differences and knew they're back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back to ring the last bit of sweetness out it for cold hard cash, eh? They must think we're daft. Only a mug would pay to see a bunch of pensioners. <laughs> Staggering about the stage, you know. Monty Python. Right. <laughs> Fuck them. That's, that's what we're really humbled about, the, the, the fact that the audience have been so faithful to us and continue to be. It was the biggest and greatest affirmation we could have ever hoped for. But it also told us, and we discovered about the show, that we could go seven years without having to see or speak to each other. Aye, so that's... I'll see you in seven years, you git. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One small step for a one-legged man. One giant leap for Craig Lyne! Hey! Hey! <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. So, well, there you are. Uh, uh, that flew by for me. Flew yeah. by for you. It really did. It um, only seemed like an hour. So, nothing left for us. <laughs> <laughs> nothing left for us to do except to say, listen, enjoy 2015. And get one or two down your neck. Very happy new year to you. Happy new year to you. Oh, the slosh. I love the slosh. Watch my bag, Tam. <laughs> Winston. Oh, my gosh. You know a slosh, man. No. <laughs> a dashing white sergeant. Oh my god. <laughs> You're saying happy 2015. What do they, re they repeat it next year? Well, it's BBC. Uh, oh, well, uh, very happy 2016. <laughs> happy 2017. 2000, does this repeat, repeat money? Listen, 2018, 2019, happy 2020. 2021. Yep, 22. Mm -hmm. Mm. They have to be robots after that with their heads in a jar. <laughs> <laughs> All the best. <laughs> mm, happy 2024, everybody. Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, I'm crying a little bit because it's... There are a couple of reasons why I'm crying. I'm crying because this was such... Oh my God, this was so beautifully done to get so many lovely people to talk about the show and just reminisce about the show show some of the best clips of the show but i'm also sad because this is probably it for still game on my channel with you guys and the entire journey over the last what two two plus years has been so much fun and I've gotten to know a lot of great people and had a lot of good, you know, conversations through the chat with all of you guys. And it's just kind of, it, it, it's kind of like the sun is setting and we're not saying goodbye at all. Don't, don't act like, don't act like we're saying goodbye because I, I am still doing um, chewing the fat and that's so much fun to watch just to see the all all the sketches but specifically you guys have seen I get so excited when's the Jack and Victor sketch oh my god to see them and I did bring up earlier in, in, in this reaction my Victor's character changed a lot Jack's character did change significantly to between chewing the fat and the start of still game and just watching and seeing where they went towards you know the end that we could watch together on youtube and i know you've all seen the entire series all through nine series i've seen all through nine series and it's just like seeing this screen right here takes me back to the moment i watched myself 
the last 30 seconds of uh, you know, the last episode in Series 9, all the characters were fading away. And it's just like, you know, it's just they didn't have to say, oh, they're all dead. But the way that they did it was just such a beautiful way to just kind of watch them just disappear from the frame. And you just kind of say, bye, have tears in your eyes the way I do now. I can't imagine watching that final episode with you guys in Scotland as it aired. I'd be in a corner in a ball crying my eyes out. A, because it made me sad. And B, because it's like, what a brilliant way to end a series. Bobby's saying, what do we have here? He was getting gray. He was older. You know, time had passed. And it's just like, wow. I mean, but as far as still game, the story so far, magical, magical documentary of the series and I'm really happy that they 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 touched on the fact that Greg and Ford lost you know they they had a falling out and they didn't reconcile fully until after seven seven years is an eternity but for all of us as lovers of the show you guys me everyone who loves still game for it to come back and just to you know, embrace it and just say, yes, let's go. We've been waiting for this moment for seven bleeping years. Cheers, you know, it's just Greg Ford, everybody involved in Still Game, all of you guys who are watching this, all of you that have made it here for, holy shit, 76 minutes. <laughs> Cheers to all of you guys. I'm going to end this with one last sip. But we will continue hanging out chatting through the comments and interacting with one another and enjoying each other's time through chewing the fat. With that being said, I want to thank you all for watching. Stay safe and don't forget to wash your hands and have a nice pint. Ah, bye.